To the casual observer, it's hard to believe that the world's ninth largest body of water is still under stress. The flotilla of boats surrounding the BP blowout site is gone, and oil exploration has resumed in the Gulf. Tourists have returned to pristine beaches. Commercial and recreational fishing boats are again working the waters of the Gulf, and the seafood is safe to eat. So what happened to over 200 million gallons of leaked oil? Government scientists estimate that 25% was burned or siphoned off, 23% reached the salt marshes and beaches or stayed in the water, and 52% evaporated into the air or was dispersed. But it was the use of dispersants that quickly caught the attention of the news media. Deadly mix. Did the chemicals used to break up that oil in the Gulf do more harm than good? Little is known about the effect of these chemicals applied in such great amounts. The EPA insists dispersants are biodegradable, but many locals worry their community could become another love canal. I just don't know that anyone can say today whether dispersants was a good choice or a bad choice. Uh, it may have probably or may have been the lesser of evils. Uh, only time will tell did the dispersants actually have a long-term effect on uh, our ecology and environment or not. Scientists at Johns Hopkins University are developing innovative ways to see how dispersants interact with the ocean. What happens to, uh, after an oil spill? How fast the oil disperses? How much of the oil is going to end up in the marshes? How much of the oil will settle to the bottom? We need to answer those questions. Otherwise, we don't really have tools to predict, and then we don't really know what kind of tools do we need to develop to mitigate the adverse effect of oil. Despite the use of dispersants, about 47 million gallons of Deepwater Horizon oil reached land or stayed in the water. Its impact poses a lingering question that scientists are still trying to answer.